The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus and his disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee. But he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, the Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, he began to ask them, what were you arguing about on the way? but they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then he sat down, called the 12, and said to them, if anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst and putting his arms around it, he said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. strong words this morning. In the readings, we encounter jealousy, selfish ambition, argument, willful ignorance, fear, ego, anger. In the first reading, those words are horrifying. They want to hurt someone because that someone disagrees with them so they will hurt him. The desire to hurt those who disagree with us is alive and well 2,000 years of Christendom later. Where are the good Christians of our time? Who will choose to live a different way? The apostles didn't understand what Jesus was saying in the gospel because they didn't want to. They were perfectly able to figure out the message. They were in denial because they did not sign up for a suffering Christ. 
And in their willful ignorance, they change the subject to something far more pleasant. This is absolutely hilarious. The argument about who is, is the greatest among them. And in this tension between their, their sinful natures, their egos and their ambition, the wisdom of God's grace from above, bringing the spiritual gifts of gentleness and mercy that we heard in the second reading, that gets washed away by ego. The spiritual gifts of gentleness, mercy, that are pure and peaceable, our freedom will win every time. Freedom to choose the path of virtue or to choose to walk your own path. Now, willful ignorance is the decision to avoid or reject information, knowledge, or facts that may challenge one's beliefs or attitudes or behaviors. It involves an intentional, conscious choice not to engage in the truth, in reality. Because doing so would cause cognitive dissonance, the discomfort of holding conflicting beliefs, and the awareness that our behavior contradicts our values. So when your behavior does not fit your values, you'll make rationalizations. You'll say, well, I, you know, I need to do this, or this is, you know, I, I got to do it. And, and once you start rationalizing, you will do what you want to do. St. Augustine was such a good psychologist as well as a saint, and he would always say that we move in the direction of what we desire in the moment. You will go where you wish, wish for the right things. St. Augustine would say, pray for the desire to do the right thing, to want to. And if conscious, willful ignorance isn't enough, consider all the things you're not aware of, your blind spots. Things people see in you, but you do not. Jesus gives us the only antidote. Humility. Intellectual humility. The simple realization that sometimes the truth is beyond us. I do not understand global politics. Therefore, I won't preach on it. <laughs> Thank you, Father. <laughs> Intellectual humility. Emotional humility. My emotions are as valid as anyone else's, but not more so. We don't inflict our emotions on others. Spiritual humility, to be grounded, not scrupulous, not caught up in a whirlpool of guilt, but a good, sober self-awareness. And finally, moral humility. This is the key. I don't know if you're aware of this, but the largest demographic group in this nation responsible for the discrimination against LGBTQ, minorities, migrants, and refugees are in fact self-identified uh, self Christians. It's difficult to get that out. One state political leader is now going after radical nonprofits who have the temerity to assist immigrants and refugees Radical groups like Catholic Charities will be investigated. <laughs> Moral humility involves removing the plank from my own eyes first. Jesus, our Lord, presents us with a child as a model for our lives to strive for. Not simply for the virtues of humility, but for the goodness of a child, the wonder of a child, the unconditional love of children, the joy of children unburdened by sin and ego and judgmentalism. We can be truly free, like children at play in the fields of the Lord, if you wish. <laughs>